Hi there viewers and welcome to the Repair It Don't Wreck It channel. Today we're working on my electric hot water tank. It's rated for 240 volts. The capacity is 50 US gallons, 189 liters or 42 imperial gallons. The two heating elements are rated for 4500 watts. It has been a while since I've looked at the elements on this tank. I think it's time to take them out and have a look to see what's going on. I am a licensed plumber and gas tech, not a licensed electrician. For this reason, I will do electrical repairs on my own equipment exclusively. Once you get the metal cover off and styrofoam insert removed, you'll have access to the wiring and the element. To be safe, I will turn the power off before removing the plastic guard from the upper and lower elements. Since this is my tank, I know the breaker is the correct one from previous checks. Still, I will remove the plastic guards assuming that the power is on. Now that the plastic guards are off, I can turn the power on. Let's see what we get. One lead's gonna go on the relief valve, which will be my ground, and the other lead will go to the red wire terminal. Here I'm getting about 121, 122 volts. Let's check the other side, which is the black wire. Again, around 122 volts. Now when I go from black to red, both legs, I'm getting 244 volts. This is good. Now the lower element. I will put one test lead on the ground screw, the other test lead to the black terminal screw. I'm getting about 122 volts, same as above. Now I will test the other leg, which is the red wire terminal. Same thing, 121, 122 almost voltage. Now when I go to each leg, I get 244 volts. Pretty well the same as the top. Turn the power off. Retest both elements again to make sure that the breaker is functioning and the power is off. Once I'm satisfied that the power is off, I can drain the tank. Do not drain the tank if you're not sure that the power is off. If the tank still has power and you drain the water out, the elements will be damaged and need replacing. I know I spent a lot of time checking the power, but it's very important. Electricity is something not to fool with. If you're not comfortable with anything electrical, do not do it yourself. It is not worth it. The power is off. Let's get on with removing the elements and checking them out. First, I'm going to attach a hose to the drain located at the bottom of the tank. This one's made of plastic, so go easy on it when tightening it up. Next, turn off the cold water supply to the tank. This is a ball valve, so when the handle is perpendicular to the pipe, it is in the off position. Open the drain valve at the bottom of the tank. Normally, very little water will come out. You need to open some faucets in the house to allow air to get into the system. Since I had a cold water feed to my water filter, this was a good spot to let the air in. I don't recommend using the relief valve to admit air in unless it has been tested regularly, at least once or twice a year since it's been installed. If it hasn't been opened in years, when you close it, it can leak and in some cases need replacing. The washer inside the relief valve develops a memory over time. After the water has been draining for about 10 to 15 minutes, I think it's safe to remove the upper element. The first thing you need to do is remove the two wires from the element with a Phillips screwdriver. Once you have the wires off, you can remove the element. Here I have a special socket. I bought this one at the local hardware store. Anyone that sells the element should have this socket. As you can see, it's not all that hard to get it off. There's a large rubber washer to keep it from leaking on the back side. When installing it, don't over tighten it as it could distort and cause a leak. Carefully remove it as you don't want to drag any debris into the tank. Wow, I'm surprised at the amount of buildup. Even the darker color was not what I was expecting. Let's remove the lower element. I'm expecting the same deposit or worse. The process is the same. Remove the two wires and unscrew the element. Look at this one. It's lighter in color with more deposit on it. With my multimeter set on the ohm scale, 
I'm going to check the resistance of these elements. The first one, we're sitting around 13 ohms. And now I'm going to check the next one, which is around 12.4 ohms. The fact they are so close to each other leads me to believe they're okay. My spare one from a previous tank is longer and gives me 58 ohms. It's safe to say that they're all different. Now that I've cleaned them in some espresso machine coffee descaler, they look pretty good. To be honest, I was going to replace them, but I thought it was worth a try to clean them. You could see that both elements had the same ohm resistance prior to the cleaning, so I'm satisfied that they should be okay to install. I had a bit of trouble getting the threads started for the element. They are very coarse, so I was really not worried about cross-threading them. Once it's tightened by hand, give it a 1 8 to 1 quarter turn, something like installing a spark plug on your car. Again, don't overdo it because if you compress that washer too much, you could actually cause a leak. Next, connect the two wires. Make sure they are fully inserted into the element connections. You can see as I'm tightening the screws, the element is oscillating on the rubber washer a bit. That should be tight enough. The bottom element is exactly the same. Before turning on the water and checking for leaks, I will reconnect my cold water line for the filter. It is a plastic pipe with a plastic furl, so you don't have to overdo it when tightening it. Turn on the water and fill up the tank. I opened up the faucet in the bathtub and flushed everything through the spout. This way I eliminated running any of the debris through the shower head or an aerator. Once the plastic guard is in place, you can install the styrofoam insert. Push it in squarely so it seats and is fully in. Now you can put the metal cover on. What I like to do is start the screws by hand. Don't overdo it, this metal's not all that thick. Turn on the power. Check the bottom drain valve for leaks as this is common when draining tanks that haven't been serviced in a while and have a lot of mineral and deposit in the bottom. This stuff gets stuck on the seat and will cause a drip. If you run into this problem, you can temporarily put a cap on as I've shown in the shot. I like to put a piece of paper towel underneath the valve. If there is a leak, it will show up immediately. I will check it for at least one day. I thought I would demonstrate how to test the relief valve if you're going to do it. It's just a matter of lifting the lever and holding it open and let the water drain out. You need to be careful because this is the hottest water as it is coming off the top of the tank. This is a certified relief valve. It is designed to relieve at 210 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 PSI pounds per square inch. This one is certified by the CSA, Canadian Standards Association and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ASME. This certification has been adopted by most jurisdictions having authority. Here's a look at my spare valve. You can see what happens inside when you lift the lever. They are not complicated devices. This is what you want when safety is concerned. Water expands 1600 times when turned to steam. That's why these tanks are so dangerous when the safety devices are malfunctioning or have been removed. All certified relief valves will have a tag or a label on them containing the required information. In order to keep the video as short as possible, I put additional information in the description. Check it out. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and as always, repair it. Don't wreck it. Thanks for watching.